I don't know if you can see it right now, but there are quite a few juvenile larvae in the tube that are uh, working their way up into the harvest container. Of course, they crawl on the outside of this tube too, which is okay. But um, anyway, uh, I have a concern now that the that the mature larvae, the dark ones, are not going to be able to crawl out as effectively as I want. But you know, I'm really not sure that there are times when uh, you just get a lot of mature larvae crawling off, and I'll actually give you a, a look here at the harvest tube. Um, the harvest tube, the uh, harvest container. We have a, a definite majority of juvenile as opposed to juvenile. These are the juveniles. These are still in the stage where they eat. So ideally they would be in the bucket. The dark ones here, the mature larvae, don't eat anymore in this stage and they just want to get out of the bucket as these did uh, and find a place to pupate. So that's the basic concept is we want to collect the mature larva. I do have a theory, I may have mentioned it, that one reason I think you'll get a lot of juvenile larva crawling off is because uh, it might just get too crowded in the bucket. It's a small container and I have a lot of black soldier flies that have been attracted to it. There's one right now checking it out. Um, so there might just be too many individuals in here and they may be able to sense that and therefore migrate away from the waste here. I've actually been processing a good amount of waste in here. I, I think a pound a day is not um, unreasonable. I know there were two days in a row that I added a pound. Uh, they were uh, old stale loaves of some type of a sweet bread, um, like blue, blueberry bread or cinnamon bread or something like that. They're very dense and you know each one was two pounds and they were gone in 24 hours. So um, it might vary with what type of food you're processing, but they certainly uh, vanish quickly. Now this apple, of course, they've taken a while to work on. That's because they really they can only eat it where it's exposed to the skin. They can't penetrate that skin. They don't have a jaw like that, which is why they're not uh, a problem in the garden or something like that. And this apple is also pretty hard, so they can really only scrape away you know, the bacteria and the and the the rotting part on the outside that's exposed from the skin. So. That actually would take them several days probably to, to work on because it's so hard. Um, I think I think one thing I might want to try to do to encourage a better crawl off rate is, uh, and I did this last night, I added some sawdust and some wood shavings. Here's a girl coming to lay some eggs. Um, You know, I, I haven't, I guess the waste I've been processing has been fairly dry and I, I haven't had anything coming out of the drain for a long time. Uh, but I, I added some sawdust and some wood shavings because I'm trying to create a, a um, distinct surface so that the larvae will, that are trying to migrate out, the mature ones, will have a, a clear path when they get to the edge and then crawl around and be directed into the harvest tube. One of my concerns, too, is that the tube might be too small of a diameter uh, for the best efficiency. I mean, it's frequently when I open, take the lid off before they go to try and hide from the light. Hey, sweetie. I call it sweetie. Uh, yeah, I guess that's after three years or four years of working with them. Uh, you anthropomorphize a bit. Anyway, um, this opening may be a bit narrow because I will see a, a group of usually juvenile juvenile larva kind of blocking the tube here. They're congregating in there so uh, maybe I can solve that by making the tube shorter therefore steeper uh, or or maybe the diameter is too small. But another possibility is you know and I've seen like at night when there's condensation on the walls of the uh, on the walls of the bucket, I'll see dark larvae trying to crawl out through the vents. Now the Velcro has stopped the vast majority. I've seen three or four get past the Velcro, which uh, the biopod that I worked with for the past few years didn't do better than that. So I'm very happy with that. But they were trying to get out, and it, it, my fear was that they weren't able to find the the exit tube. It could be that even in in the biopod, um, which has the advantage of being molded and have these nice ramps molded into it during the process is that 
it could be that it took the mature larva several days to find their way out of, of that too and obviously or I mean clearly there were failed attempts to find the ramps in the biopod as well so uh, my concerns might not be justified and I haven't seen yet any mature larvae that are have pupated in this bucket so maybe they're all making it out eventually uh, and I'm just right now experiencing uh, a larger degree of juvenile crawl off in my harvest container but I'm not complaining um, I, I like harvesting the juveniles this size uh, to feed to the the peafowl that are on the property or to use as bait um, you know is in some in some cases it's convenient to, to separate the juveniles from the food like that um, so it's not necessarily a problem now if I wanted to I probably mentioned this before you could add these back into the bucket and perhaps some or all probably not all but maybe most of the juveniles would stay in the bucket and continue to eat you know once out they can't get back in that's the nature of the harvest system so uh, but you can you can just dump all these back in if you want to you can sift them sift them out so the sawdust doesn't go back in I, I add sawdust occasionally anyway but uh, the theory being that the juvenile larvae, the ones that got in there, let's say by mistake, or that would have otherwise migrated back to some food, they'll be in there and they can take advantage of the food again that's here and remain in the bucket uh, until they mature. And But the mature ones will uh, immediately try and find their way out. And they did it once, so the idea being that they would do it again. So um, it's it's one way to you know reintroduce the juveniles and to kind of separate these if you want to. Well, that's, um, you know, I've, I'm working on version 2.1, and uh, I'm also using a different filter material. The, um, doesn't seem to be an issue now because most of the action is happening, happening um, away from the filter now that I've kind of built up the bulk inside the unit here. Um, but I was running into issues with the, them shredding this, uh, biodegradable filter that I was using. So I'm just going to dig in here a bit and see. Now, at some point I will remove these corn cobs because they won't eat the they won't eat the high cellulose cob part. But every time I look at them there I see, I don't know that you can see it in the camera, but very small larvae and they're still just finishing up the tiny little bits. Now they, they live off of bacteria so as long as bacteria will grow on here and there's enough nutrition to support some bacteria growth, they'll go and scrape them off and, and get the nutrition they need from that. So it's kind of an ideal little habitat for them. But uh, same with the mango pit. That was a pretty good mango. So they're still in there working on it and, uh, and it could be you know a long time, several weeks before there's really nothing there to attract them. Um, as I said, I'm not getting a lot of drainage. The, the, the compost feels a bit heavy to me, but it um, doesn't have a bad odor whatsoever. Uh, there are appear to be uh, all sizes of larva all the way down here. Well, it's a few inches deep. Well, I'm actually they've completely shredded the filter material in this area. That's one of the golf balls that I used to raise the filter material up off the bottom. So now I suspect that uh, there really isn't a, a void underneath the the, uh, the filter anymore. I'm thinking that it's just now become incorporated into the compost. So uh, that would kind of support my my theory with the new version of using a synthetic filter which uh, which I have already installed on a new bucket so I, I think I might have to abandon the idea of using this biodegradable filter because it, the uh, the larvae are just so um, powerful I guess is the word I mean they really can shred um, you know you know as a group they can really move a lot of weight and um, move a lot of material and have a have a major impact on things like this uh, filter medium so at some point, you know, I'm not going to do it just now, but I'll probably pull everything out of this bucket. I'll take some pictures if I do, if I if I learn something new, um, and, uh, and and just investigate what's happening with in the bottom of the bucket here. But I think it's safe to assume at this point that a synthetic filter is going to be uh, a better way to go. Um, but 
uh, I'll find out more about that later. So I haven't had I haven't noticed you know this could be it could mean that I'm not getting anything out of the drain tube because uh, the drain the drain is blocked. Uh, it's just a dense compost and it's not letting liquids pass through. I as I mentioned I haven't been processing things like melons or, or other um, high moisture uh, waste so it could just be that there's been nothing to drain out for that reason um, but uh, but we do need to maintain some good drainage so I'll take it apart and see where we're at with the drainage on that and then I probably am getting ready to abandon this particular unit um, since I'm on now to version uh, 2.1 um, you know I, 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 you know I don't really see the purpose of keeping this one going so um, so this may be the last video now I will call this a success in most ways uh, I, I don't have bad smells I've processed a fairly good amount of waste I've collected quite a few larvae uh, I've had uh, uh, no issues whatsoever no problems with uh, attracting the females to the bucket and them laying eggs and the eggs then you know developing in the bucket so really I would call this a success and I'm sure I could continue to use this but I uh, you know I do think it's important to improve the issue with the drain filter and I, I just have a feeling at this point I, there was a lot of heat in this bucket when I when I lifted the lid today and you know, we're still not into the hottest part of the summer so I, I think my um, inclination to increase this the uh, amount of ventilation is on the right track so you know, I have noticed a few house flies. This, this is a little bit of a warning sign. A few, an occasional house fly in the unit is not a cause for great concern, but I would take notice, and I would not want to see a house fly inside. Say every time I open the lid, um, it's just a, it's just a warning sign. They, the the repellent effect from black soldier fly larva isn't absolute, uh, but in a unit like this, which has a very pleasant smell, it's actually has kind of a sweet. Uh, pleasant odor because I was processing those um, sweet uh, bakery items that I mentioned. So again, it's it's being successful. It's not anaerobic, uh, but I am I am uh, noticing a flight house flight one or two. And you know, I mean, you could look at it as you know quite amazing that you know with uh, weather in the upper 80s or I think even into the 90s lately that you have a bucket full of unrefrigerated waste that's been out for weeks and you know occasionally you'll see a fly in it so you know maybe my expectations are a bit too high but again it's a it's a new unit we're testing it and I want to take in to consideration everything that I can and, and try and anticipate problems before before they arise so anyway that's where we're at today and uh, hopefully I can get a new video out and uh, showing the uh, the new upgrade and get that posted on my blog as well